Thank you, Bob, for this wonderful conference we're having here today. We hosted this at the Anschutz Medical Campus last year, and, and it just keeps getting better. Thank you so much for this wonderful uh, day. And uh, if I learned one thing from Bob, it's that you have to start with a prop. So I don't have a walking stick, but I do have the uh, Sunday Styles New York Times, and they have this wonderful article on CBD is everywhere. So this is a person with, in a... Uh, bath balm of CBD and I'll leave this here for our break in case anybody wants to take a look at that you can find it online as well so as Lori said I'm a professor of medicine at a uh, professor of dermatology in the School of Medicine at the University of Colorado I'm also in the School of Public Health and I have found nothing more exciting in my field than cannabinoids and dermatology and why is that well one of the biggest problems we have from our patients is itch and one of the worst treated symptoms we have in dermatology is itch. And one thing that cannabinoids promise to possibly treat well is itch. itch. <laughs> so I'm going to give a, a brief introduction. Uh, I'll talk about some potential uses of, I'm mainly going to focus on CBD here today, but uh, we have cannabinoids, there's 104 and counting of them, and any combination of them could be affecting the skin in different ways. So really the uh, horizon is pretty endless and beautiful like the uh, mountains outside the windows here. I've already talked about the, uh, the article in the New York Times. And speaking about the, the current administration, there's a conspiracy theory that they have a um, goal of increasing the subscriptions to the New York Times and they're currently at an all-time high of more than four million right now and, and they're doing uh, great profits. So. My uh, first publication in cannabinoids was to summarize the role of cannabinoids in dermatology in the top uh, medical journal for dermatology, the Journal of the American Academy of Dermatology and this is that article from just two years ago so I'm, I'm relatively new but uh, very excited about this field. So uh, some of the top potential uses are for itch and inflammatory skin diseases, but you can pretty much mention any skin disease and there's a potential role of cannabinoids for the treatment of it. So it's really a, panana, a panacea, but I'm going to mainly be focusing on CBD and inflammatory skin diseases. So the big ones that cause the most disability worldwide are psoriasis, which about one in uh, 50 people has psoriasis uh, throughout their lifetime. And eczema, that's about one in 10 children have, psoriasis, have uh, eczema as kids, and uh, about one in 20 as adults. And then again, itch is a very common, dis uh, common symptom of almost all skin disease. Now this is a diagram of what the skin looks like. And I'm just showing you this so that when, we, when I show you another uh, picture a little bit um, down the road, uh, this is a hair bulb. And uh, you'll recognize the hair bulb in the uh, slide of skin. So this is a huge magnification. So if you can imagine a hair on the back of your hand being that big, uh, we're talking about huge magnification. But where are the <laughs> CBD receptors and other receptors they're actually in the skin. Uh, they're in the nerve. This is that yellow thing that's poking up there that gives a sensation. But they're also in individual cells in the top of the skin, the, the skin cells, the keratinocytes. And they're in the mast cells, which are the cells that when you get scratched, you get a hive. And when you take antihistamines, they're, it's being used to uh, decrease that reaction in the skin. So skin cells were actually discovered in the skin a while ago, and uh, this, these are some of the experiments that localized the cannabinoid receptor one and two to the skin cells and the mast cells. They were subsequently found to be in the uh, skin cells, the keratinocytes themselves. And that uh, picture has gotten much more complicated. Uh, you can see now we have, in addition to CB1 and CB2, there are all of these TR, PV1 uh, uh, receptors throughout the skin, and uh, we have CB1, CB2, not only in the, in the keratinocytes up here, but also in the oil-producing uh, cells of the um, skin, which are very important for acne, uh, in the mast cells. Uh, there's also 
PPAR, um, which I'm looking for where it is there, but I'm not seeing it. But anyway, the, the, ba the bottom line is that there are a ton of uh, receptors in the skin through which these uh, medications might be active. So when you think of a rash, sort of the classic rash in dermatology is poison ivy. And you can find some of that out here in the uh, creek by the Boulder River. And uh, the very first time you touch poison ivy, you don't get a rash. Uh, the first time your, your immune system recognizes the, the antigen in the ivy, and the next time you touch it, then your immune system goes crazy and causes this rash that causes blisters. And you can do that same type of reaction in mice. So there's a mouse model for poison ivy that causes dermatitis on the ears. So these poor mice get uh, a, a chemical on their ears. The first time it causes no swelling. The second time it causes swelling, which you can see in the blue there. And that swelling can be measured such that if you have something that counteracts the dermatitis, you would expect less swelling. The the second time the mice get exposed to that chemical. And that is exactly what was found with THC, is that when THC was put on the ears of the mice, their swelling was about half as much. So the THC didn't block all of the swelling topically, but it blocked about half of the swelling. And that similar, those similar experiments have been done with CBD as well topically. So we know that CBD and THC, when topically applied to this mouse model, of um, poison ivy reduces swelling. Now the reason we think it doesn't reduce it all the way is because um, there are these other receptors involved as well. This has been noted by um, dermatologists around the world and in Israel where it's easier to do research there's a company called One World Cannabis which has proposed a phase one randomized control trial with half CBD, half THC, uh, and they've registered this trial. This is a historic picture of what psoriasis looks like to give you an idea of the morbidity that someone can have from it. And uh, this topical uh, trial has not yet reported recruiting patients, but uh, we're awaiting word from when they do. Uh, in looking at the uh, clinical uh, trials.gov website for other CBD and uh, dermatologic clinical trials. There's currently one that's been proposed in Denmark that's for psoriatic arthritis. Uh, this is again a randomized control trial uh, to see if there's an effect. Uh, that's not recruiting yet. Uh, one that I just learned about last night in uh, looking through the internet is for epidermolysis bullosa. So this is a very rare genetic disorder of the skin that causes the skin to be very, very fragile. So it leads to um, lots of blisters in any area of friction from uh, childhood. And the uh, UK organization that uh, does research on this has just um, funded a 200 $1,000 uh, clinical trial for sublingual phytocannabinoid-based oil four times a day in the Netherlands. And we'll be uh, looking forward to getting the results in then 2021. And then lastly, uh, the other thing I learned about was the graft versus host disease, which is a terrible disease of, uh, it affects the skin and the gut, um, and people are looking at CBD for this type of disease. This is when somebody gets a bone marrow transplant to uh, fight their cancer, to reset their whole immune system. Oftentimes that resetting causes the immune system to attack the skin, causes graft versus host disease of the skin. This, these four trials were registered in Israel uh, between 2012 and 2015 at various doses of CBD, and they haven't reported results, but this led me to uh, send an email to uh, Ed Cohen at the NIH, who's the leading dermatologist there who works with graft versus host disease, and he said that he wasn't aware of these trials, but he did tell me anecdotally that he has some patients who have uh, bad graft versus, graft versus host disease, and they report to him anecdotally using CBD and getting uh, some relief from their symptoms of uh, mainly cramping of the gut because uh, graft gra versus host affects the gut as well as the skin. So there's some possibility of uh, this being good
for that disease as well. So back to what we're doing. Um, we're focusing on eczema, uh, which is a very common disease. And you can currently get uh, medications over the counter through the internet uh, that contain PEA, which is a endocannabinoid uh, uh, turnover enzyme inhibitor. And also there are CBD uh, lotions, which are going to be a, a steroid alternative coming on that market. Uh, we have three projects that we're doing. Our first one is to get a registry of our dermatology patients at the University of Colorado. We just opened this registry. We've had two eczema patients enroll so far. Two of them have told us that they're using CBD oils and other CBD um, products for their rash, and they report anecdotally that they're having improvement in appearance, dryness, itching, number of lesions, pain, redness, and scale for their uh, eczema. So that's just two patients from our clinic. Our second project is to work with Dr. Uh, Leahy on her project because half of patients who have um, Parkinson's get this rash in the central face called seborrheic dermatitis. So uh, we're interested in looking at the patients in her trial without having to go through all of those regulatory steps um, <laughs> to see if the oral CBD affects that rash and decreases it. So that's our second project. And our third project uh, that we're in the, the process of uh, working out is to look at the itch that burn patients experience after their burns have healed through with our um, University of Colorado burn unit. And uh, we have some uh, interest in looking at whether or not CBD helps those burn patients with that symptom. Uh, another place that we're looking for data is from patients like me to see if anybody in patients like me is reporting using cannabinoids for eczema and their skin diseases. So other potential um, areas that cannabinoids are uh, being proposed or currently being used to treat uh, disease or acne, which is the disease which causes the most disability from dermatology across the world, scleroderma, dermatomyositis, and also there's some promise in skin cancer too because the cannabinoids seem to uh, inhibit uh, blood vessel formation in cancers. So conclusions, there's great potential. Um, there are also some adverse effects, which we touched on a little bit, but uh, one of the ones that we're um, seeing that's perhaps not reported enough is uh, allergic contact dermatitis to cannabinoids in people who work in the field uh, touching the plants. But uh, again, those are relatively minor. Uh, the skin is a terrific barrier for getting any medication into it and uh, for having any systemic effects from putting stuff on your skin. So we're, we're working with um, Altus Laboratories to uh, find the best uh, ways of getting cannabinoids delivered to the skin disease that we can. Uh, but much, uh, much more research is needed for many years to come. So I thank you for uh, listening to me and look forward to collaborating with any of you that have potential applications of dermatology uh, in your, your trials in the future as Maureen has. Thank you so much.